Bob, in addition to the China news, this is the other big question for markets, right? What's going to happen to the economy given the weakness in Europe and, and the slowdown in China? Yeah, I really like Jay Powell, and I think what he just said is a lot of what you guys have been saying all morning. He basically said the economy in the U.S. is strong. It could be stronger with a China deal. It's going to stay strong even without. The length of time it takes to get the deal done, I think that was his way of commenting on that. We're going to see slower growth, but there's going to be growth. U.S. is doing very, very well. The jobs numbers, to me, were great. Take that headline miss out. Everything behind the headline miss was really, really strong. I was really positive about the jobs numbers. Not positive. There's only 20,000 jobs. Yeah, but when you look at the 12,000 uh, ratchet up of the last two months, when you look at the wages, when you looked at labor force participation rate was steady with the unemployment rate dropping, everything behind behind that headline number was bad, was really good, which led me to believe that 20,000 number was more about companies not finding the people they wanted to hire rather than not wanting to hire them. We're going to have an important indicator this morning at 8.30 when uh, retail sales data come out. We had a really bad retail sales number out a month ago. What are you expecting to, to find out today? Well, I think there's going to be big revisions on that retail sales number. You look at the earnings of some of the retail companies that we've seen. Everyone seemed to do better. Now, in terms of that holiday sales number, I'm not sure where that came from. I'd be really disappointed if we didn't get revisions of that number in the new release. A lot of people questioned it. Right. Yeah, it just seems strange. I mean, you saw a lot of positive comments out of the companies asked, outside uh, of Black Friday. about it last night in that interview, by the way. It was interesting. I'm dying to hear what John thinks we'll, as we move on, what you thought about that interview. Because it was unprecedented for him to go out, I think, in a time of great growth and uh, not a crisis and do an interview on 60 Minutes. Uh, maybe a subtle message to President Trump uh, in, in that interview that uh, he's got a voice, too. Mm -hmm. So in, in the face of all of this, do you want to put new money to work in this market then? It, it sounds like you're well, fairly bullish. Well, it's kind of funny. We're underinvested, and we have been all year. And part of that reason is because we don't have a deal. And even though I think there's going to be a deal, I'm not on the, at the table signing it. So until that actually happens, I'd rather play catch up with the market. We buy discounted companies when we buy companies, so I'd rather continue to use that plan. And when we get a deal in place, then we just play catch up and get some good And on commodities? Commodities, yes, we are long. We're long copper, we're long crude oil. Those are the kind of things we look for. We think that the U.S. economy is enough to at least keep these stable. Bob, it's great to have you on the program. It's good to be here. Thank Thanks you. Thanks so much. Bob Iacchino joining us there.